As we mentioned before, woke SJW Disney has been failing on all fronts, not just in the theme park, not just in terms of pushing away normal families and trying to cater to the small minority of SJW, feminist, blue-haired, you know, LGBT, transgender, cross-dressing, essentially all the weird stuff promoted by the woke SJW crowd, trying to pander to those people and pushing away normal families. Or if you want to talk about just their endless box office flops or whatever else, they've been failing on all fronts. And they have they've have yet to face the harsh reality of the truth of go woke, go broke. And here's just one example of the fact that they're failing on all fronts. They're not doing so well. They tried to pick a fight with the state of Florida over a law that had nothing to do with them. And that was basically against homosexualization of kids under the age of eight. You know, and that was just, that was just, you know, that was really what got the ball rolling. But here is the harsh reality. This is on Variety magazine. Even mainstream sources are, are pushing, are um, reporting on this, I mean. It says, Disney's harsh new reality, costly film flops, creative struggles, and a shrinking global box office. Yeah, no kidding. It says, in the past decade, sorry, for the past decade, Disney has been on the uh, Teflon movie studio, remarkably uh, adept to withstanding tectonic changes impacting the film industry and well fortified by its arsenal of key properties such as Marvel, Lucasfilm, and Pixar. But this year, the long-reigning titan of the box office has shown cracks as four of its biggest releases of those brands and others have struggled in theaters. The, uh, sorry, there was the, the uh, disappointing release of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, the rare Marvel movie, likely to lose tens of millions in the theatrical run, the Little Mermaid remake of the 1989 animated classic that fell drastically short of expectations, Elemental, an original story that tried and failed to recapture Pixar's magic, and most recently, Indiana Jones and the Dial of, De Dial of Destiny, or one way I'd like to, to dub it is Indiana Jones and the Diagnosis of Dementia, because it was a fail. No kidding. I mean, like, whatever. And a nearly three hundred million investment of one of those uh, one of the cinemas, the most van sorry, most venerable franchises, which no longer appears to have the same hold on today's audiences. On paper, these films seem like they had all the markings of huge hits, but somehow Disney, that Disney sparkle, was lacking this time in terms of filling movie theater seats. Yeah, I wonder why. When it comes to Indiana Jones, it, it was basically he was getting bullied by this feministic. Essentially, this this caricature. Yeah, essentially, you have this uh, female character coming in, who is a uh, just arrogant, feministic Mary Sue type character, who essentially pushes him around in his own movie, bullies him around. You know, bullies him. Uh, at one point, tries to get him killed. I mean, it's a bunch of garbage. The film was called Indiana Jones, but he was getting bullied and beaten around in his own film by allegedly one of the protagonists, not by the bad guys. Yeah, and you wonder why it's flopping because. As far as I'm concerned, this is not Indiana Jones. There's four Indiana Jones movies. Yes, I do consider Kingdom of the Crystal Skull to be part of the canon. I did actually enjoy it when I, when I saw it uh, when I was uh, a young kid, young boy. But it says in the article, Barring a miracle or a, a, a sudden surge of interest in the haunted mansion in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, uh, looks like it'll be the studio's biggest earner of the year with $385 million. The first time since 2014, since, uh, except for the pandemic-stricken years of 2020 and 2021, that Disney won't have a movie that reaches $1 billion. It marks a shift in 2022, which saw the studio release not only hits like Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, but also Avatar The Way of Water, the third highest-grossing film in history. But even if that's the case... Disney still far outranks the competition in terms of the market share in 2023. So they're trying to like make excuses really, but it doesn't hide the, the brutal reality of what's going on. It talks about 37% of the industry's revenues, Universal, again, it's just trying to make excuses. You know, yeah, they've had some successes, but it doesn't change the fact that they've had more flops. I mean, just flop after flop after flop, you know, and a lot of these successes don't make up for that. It says in the article, there are other issues um, sorry, bed living the Magic Kingdom these days because of, of all of its temple and all the time strategy. Disney movies each require production budgets of at least 200 million plus marketing costs of roughly 100 million. This means the studio's films have a higher benchmark than its rivals to uh, break even at the box office. In the past, those budgets were justified with movies that cross 1 billion worldwide with ease. Those price tags are riskier today in today's box office landscape, with China's dollars no longer guaranteed, no longer a guarantee due to tensions with the West and changing. Uh, taste russia another major market entirely cut off from hollywood movies after its invasion of ukraine as a result the international box office has diminished to a shadow of its former self 
and has major consequences for Disney's profitability. To be fair, every studio is grappling with these punishing realities at the box office. Remains down roughly 20% from pre-pandemic times, but Disney has historically enjoyed such a track record of success, and its issues are casting a ball over the movie business. See, again, they're trying to make excuses and trying to say, well, you know, certain uh, circumstances and whatever else, but it doesn't change the fact that Universal has actually put out a film about the, what's that game called? Super Mario Brothers. They put out a film. Uh, it, to, to call it successful will be an understatement, okay? Universal has been having a lot of success recently. They have had a, a major increase in park attendance. So the excuses don't really change the fact that Disney has been failing. You know, and yes, yes, have they have they had some successes? Yeah, exactly. They have they have had some successes in terms of how much money they're making, but it doesn't change the fact that they've been failing on all fronts. I mean, uh, what's that film called? Elemental. Yeah, uh, it's box office flop. Lightyear, box office flop. Uh, with Strange World, box office flop. Indiana Jones, box office flop. Uh, Little Mermaid remake. You know, not well received by a lot of people. I mean, it just they have some successes, but had more failures than successes. Uh, one, it's it, it just they can't ignore the reality. That's the point. So yeah, like I said, woke well, SJW Disney has been failing on all fronts, and they did this to themselves when they tried to pander to these this social liberal ideology. Here's my thing, you know, I support separation of church and state. I also support separation of entertainment and movies from politics. You know, whenever these people get on any side of the political spectrum, they're doom dooming themselves for failure. So, woke SJW Disney has yet to face the reality of what's going on. Normal people, normal families are not the kind of people who are going to be into the kind of stuff that these woke SJW weirdos on Twitter and on Facebook and YouTube and whatever else are going to be into. So I wanted to show you guys that. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.